We don't like the sticky lips. Mm -mm, not one bit. So hello and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cuppa. Today's coffee mug is the Art Institute of Atlanta coffee mug that came from my husband's alma mater. Uh, he graduated, oh my lord, I don't even know, <laughs> five, six, seven years ago? Long time. He's been working in the industry ever since as a chef. Uh, but this, and I don't think this particular art institute exists anymore. And it's quite possible most of them don't. There was a big lawsuit about um, them making promises uh, that people would get jobs and basically drawing in people who couldn't afford college. And yeah, so I think they ended up getting shut down, at least in a few places. I know they shut some of them down. I don't know if they shut down the rest. At any rate, this is a coffee mug from that time period. I told you all I was going to start sharing some of my older mugs again, and this one is old indeed. Anyway, so today's tea is a brand new tea that is similar to other another tea that I have. As you all know, I love chocolate and I love mint. I have a stash chocolate mint. Well, today we're going to try the private selection chocolate mint herbal tea. This is what that looks like on the front. And their ingredients are, find the ingredients, cocoa shell, roasted carob, peppermint, spearmint, natural flavor, and blackberry leaf. I've had fairly good most of the time. Fairly good luck with the private selection teas. I use a tea in my lemonade drink. Uh, I use one of their mint teas in there. And I use, I have the loose uh, peach lemon tea that I really like. So we've had some success with their teas. This one smells amazing. It smells amazing. Really, really hoping that it tastes as good as it smells. I did double bag it just in case. Um, it might be like the stash teas where it just needs a bit more help to get the flavor, the strength of flavor I like. But I can tell you, oh Lord, it smells good. Hasn't been steeping long, but let's go ahead and give her a taste and we can go ahead and get started. I'm not sure how I feel about that. You get the chocolate, you definitely get the mint, but I think the spearmint might have been a mistake. I'm gonna let it steep and figure itself out some more before I just make a final decision about it. It just may need time for the flavors to meld better. But that spearmint is kind of sticking out to me and I'm pretty much not a fan of spearmint. Alrighty, so today we are going to do a tale of two hair brands and two different hairlines. Um, one was not so, so successful, the other one has become a favorite of mine. So I'm going to start with the not successful one because I like to end on a positive note. Uh, as you all know, uh, I recently had a picture used without permission by a brand. And one of the things they did is they sent me some hair care products. They sent me their travel kit and they sent me something else as well. So I've got all of those little things down here. And I'm going to tell you right now, I only used it once. And there's a reason I only used it once. There's a couple of reasons I only used it once. But I do believe I mentioned on the, when I opened them, that it looked like they all had some sort of form of dimethicone or silicone, and they do. So almost all the products have some form of dimethicone. And while my hair didn't have a problem, as far as I knew, with dimethicone, there's a difference in how my 10 to 20 minute soaking period went. Um, this is something I just recently added to my hair care routine. I will, I wash my hair and then I put in my products for the styling and then I just let my hair sit and soak that up for about 10 minutes. It doesn't form a cast or anything like that. My hair takes too long to dry for me to just let it sit and do that. Um, but for 10 to 20 minutes, I will let it sit and soak up all the goodness from the products I use. My hair was much wetter at the end of that time period than usual. And this was the first time I really saw what dimethicone barrier, that dimethicone barrier in action, because basically dimethicone forms a, um, 
a barrier, a layer on your hair that doesn't let anything in and doesn't let anything out. This can be useful if like, say you're swimming and you don't want chlorine in your hair. Uh, you could be useful for um, skincare products. Once you get all your moisture in, you could put something in with the methicone over the top of it all and it'll lock it in and keep some of the, the uh, uh, problem things out. However, um, I think having dimethicone in the shampoo and the conditioner creates a roadblock for the other products. Plus, several of the other products have either amodimethicone, dimethicone, or trimethicone. Uh, and that, that all forms a very poor foundation for the rest of my styling. Uh, I also ended up, you all know, most of you know, if you've been here for any length of time, you know that when I try a line, I tend to try all the products um, without, if I can, without any uh, input from other products. Uh, this one, I think I had to use something from another line and from the other one, I already know I had to use a conditioner from another line because it doesn't have a regular conditioner. It has a couple of other things in it that are really good, but it doesn't have a regular conditioner. So I tried this line all on its own the products as much as I could. I don't remember what I had to add in, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And not only did I have problems with the um, stuff soaking in the way I would normally have it do it, uh, I also ended up with less curl and my hair was kind of a mess at the end of the day, but we will get to that in just a minute. So the shampoo, well, first of all, let me say, I do like the packaging of this, but packaging a product does not make, unfortunately. Uh, you need a very small amount. It has a great lather and it left no tangling, uh, but my ends felt dry, which they shouldn't have been since I had recently trimmed my hair and I had recently masked as well. Um, I wouldn't use this by itself again. I thought about using it, uh, in a mix of one of my other shampoos. But after you see the results at the end of this, you'll see why I chose not to. Uh, I had the worst end of the hair day, end of the day hair that I've ever had after using these products. And I've used both this line and the other line on rainy days. So it wasn't the rain that did it. It was something, it, uh, dimethicone or something in the way this product worked that these this line worked that just did not work for my hair. Uh, so no, I'm not going to use it again. And I'm not even going to give these to anybody because of that dimethicone. I would not wish to do that to anybody. They're, I got them for free because I won, not because I won, because they wanted to make up for using that photo without uh, permission. Uh, so I don't feel bad tossing them out. Normally, if I'm going to spend money on a product, I feel really bad about tossing things out. Since I didn't spend money on these products, I'm not even worried about it. Uh, the conditioner, also a dimethicone product. <laughs> uh, curl Crunch Conditioner. Needed a smaller amount than I would with any other conditioners I use. And the slip was okay, but it didn't feel like it really did much. I, conditioner is supposed to give your hair more moisture. And I didn't feel like this did that, to be honest with you. Um, and it didn't really help. Uh, counter the dryness that was left on my ends from the shampoo, which is something that I would hope that a sh that a conditioner would do if you have a shampoo that is drying out your hair a little bit. But the other thing is because the shampoo has dimethicone too. Dimethicone is the tenth ingredient. I don't know why you would need dimethicone in a shampoo, um, but because there was dimethicone in the shampoo, I think that anything this could have done was blocked by the dimethicone from the shampoo. So. Having got methicone in your shampoo just kind of makes that a little bit pointless. This one, I definitely won't be using again as I have better conditioners that really get into my hair. I have an amazing slip without the dimethicone. So even if the shampoo had worked, this would still be a no. The shampoo and this to get, no, I'm, I'm just not going to use any of them. I really wasn't impressed with this line and I'm really sad about that. I'm always looking to try new stuff. In fact, I have some new stuff on the way now to get better work better with my hair, have something, have options to switch out old products and give my hair a boost from new products or whatever I need to do. Uh, these just didn't provide any of that for me. All right, so next we have the Nectar Serum. It's a smoothing serum. It's actually an oil. It has uh, dimethicone and trimethicone. Now, I don't know why you would need uh, a, 
something like that in a thick oil because that's exactly what this is like it's an oil i don't know if you can see that running down my hand but i bet you can see it doing the oily thing on my hands i don't know why you would want anything like that in an oil just let it be an oil the thing that really is astonishing is that these have some they have argan oil they have other really good ingredients and then they went and ruined it with the dimethicone so i don't understand the brand at all at this point don't understand why any brand would put something that we know is bad for our curly hair into their products but at any rate so i did try it um This might be the one thing that I would give to somebody, I might give it to my neighbor, um, because this is something that you can use at the end of a day or at the end of your wash to help scrunch out the crunch. And in that case, the dimethicone might help a little bit to keep out anything bad. But again, it just, to me, it really didn't do a whole lot. It didn't actually really help with, uh, smoothing I was still frizzy as you'll see I was it was just yeah this I don't know I don't know guys I'm really a little <laughs> I'm a little floored but it was a thick it's a thick oil it actually smells really nice I really was hoping that it would work for me and it this just didn't all right so next they gave me the pro curl cream gel uh, has a high amount of dimethicone. The dimethicone is the actual, it's actual the second ingredient along the co-ingredient. There's another one in there. It has an odd texture, almost between a cross between a lotion and a cream. This one, whoa. So it's very loose, <laughs> as you can see. That's getting tossed. Um, so you can see it's very loose for a gel or a curling product a styling product now that's not to say that loose products can't give you hold or whatever i've had some in the past that have done that um but it's a very odd it's odd and it's also a bit gooier when you kind of rub it out if you look at that it's just i don't know if you guys can see that can you see what it's doing so it's a very strange texture so it's like a lotion it has a very lotiony scent to it. Just, I want to get this stuff on my hands now. Again, you didn't need a lot, but it also didn't have a lot of hold, as you'll see. Uh, again, another product that just, it just didn't do what I thought it would do. There was no hold to it, really. Uh, it, none of this stuff helped with frizz. <laughs> my hair, you'll see, you'll see. All right, so the last thing they sent is this party cocktail spray party curl cocktail curl boosting spray this one has amodimethicone um which is better than regular dimethicone in the fact that it is water soluble it does help a little bit with the curl it does add a little bit of shine but again it's not one that i would keep i have other whoa was i send it flying i have other uh, curl, shine, cocktailing boosters that uh, don't have dimethicone in them that work very, very well. Um, like everything else, it smells pretty. This one also has more of a perfumey scent. That was what's interesting. These two were really perfumey, whereas the, these three were not really, I mean, they had a scent, but it wasn't very perfumey, as I recall. Let me open one. I can't remember now that sense in my nose. Come here. Yeah, these had a, that's what I remember. These had a very nice fresh scent to them. Whereas these came off as very perfumey. And perfume is, parfum is in the ingredients. It's uh, about the middle for most of them. One, or, one of them may have it closer to the beginning. But um, between the scent and the fact that it really just, really just doesn't do much. Um, I'm just not impressed. I'm, I'm like I said, these three are going to go in the trash. 
But anyway, after using the shampoo, conditioner, nectar, and gel, my curls were a bit messier and had more flyaways and less shine. There were some decent ringlets, but I get that with lighter weight products anyway. And all of these are very lightweight. I will say that for them. They're very lightweight. Nothing in here heavy. Uh, at the same time, some areas had slightly less chloral than usual, and as it finished air drying, the frizz got worse. Uh, even if they did bear, ha better, however, I wouldn't see this becoming part of my routine because I'm trying to be low to no dimethicone. You all know that. Um, interestingly, the volume was good, but the actual curl deflated through the day, and that's where we get to the big problem. This, what I'm about to show you, was my end of the day curl. So yeah, no, <laughs> no way I would ever, ever use these again. I just, it, it, they were a mess. They were a mess. They were a mess. Just, it's, it's not happening. It's not happening. Just won't do it. And I wouldn't recommend the brand at this point. As far as I can tell, um, this is their line and all that dimethicone is just going to ruin your hair. Uh, I was having trouble with my hair before I used these. I used these once and I'm still recovering. It's like a week later, a little more than a week later. And I'm still having issue getting some of the curl back. I mean, it's coming back because of the line I'm about to show you. But uh, yeah, I just some of that was the way I was diffusing. I changed my diffusing again. <laughs> Apparently, I can't do the hover diffuse because I end up losing some curl. But uh, some of it is this stuff. I have a spot in the back, as I've talked about before, that almost that has issues with keeping curl, feels a little drier than the rest of my hair. And that was actually getting better, even with the problems I've been having with my hair for the past week or so, a couple of weeks since our weather started being really wonky. Um, but I used this stuff and it went back to what it was almost as far back as to when, before I started this, not quite, there's still some curl back there. Um, I've been able to get it more moisturized, but it's flatter again. The back of my head is very, very flat right now. And, uh, some of that was the old diffusing, but today I just pixie diffused and that brought my curl back. But this stuff just made a mess of my hair. So I would, I'm not going to use them. I'm not giving them to anybody. I'm just, no, just, no, I don't recommend them. And I'm sorry to say that because I really would love to recommend a new brand to people, especially an indie brand with all the dimethicone in these products. It just, it's just going to, yeah, no, stay away from it. If you're a curly girl, if you're doing CGM method, um, this is definitely not a brand that would be CGM approved. So just, I just can't recommend it. I just can't. It made a mess of my hair. I, I mean, for somebody else's hair, it may not do that. But at this point, why risk it? All right. That brings me to, after I get all that crap off my hands, because seriously, that gel in particular, and just, you. It leaves, you can, I could feel the barrier after I, after I tried to get it off the first time, so. All right, so the next, the other line, the Tale of Two Lines, the one that's being so successful, won't surprise you. It's Eden Body Works Coconut Shea. And, oh, I used her today. I used a lot of it today, not all of it, as you'll find out. So the Coconut Shea line has a moisture shampoo. It does not have a regular conditioner, but it has a leave-in conditioner. It has a co-wash. It has a treatment mask. There is a elixir, which I have been using for a very long time. This stuff definitely helps with frizz. Doesn't get rid of it entirely, but it definitely helps with frizz. Then it has this curling, curl defining cream. As you can see, this one is almost ready to go into uh, my project, my reverse rouge. But it also has this natural pudding souffle. 
and it has this natural curling jelly. Now it also had a hair balm and I believe it has like um, an edge control, but I'm not sure. I don't have either one of those. I did have the hair balm for a while. I just gave that up to my neighbor because I haven't been using it. It's not something, those hair balms just don't seem to, I don't seem to have a purpose for them. Anyway, let's get to the cleaners first, which would be the shampoo and the co-wash, which is down here somewhere. So the shampoo has a decent lather. Um, all of these do smell like coconut. So for me to say that they're really cool and that I really like them is saying something because I don't like coconut. I don't like the smell of it. I don't like the taste of it. I don't like the texture of it. I just don't like coconut, period. But the fragrance on these is not very strong and it fades pretty quickly. Uh, I use this as my regular shampoo right now because it is moisture. These do have some really good stuff in them. This one does have glycerin. It's the fourth, fourth ingredient, which is a little high for me when it's warm and when it's humid and warm. Uh, however, I'm trying to bring some glycerin back in, which is why my frizz is probably up because we are still really kind of on the humid end because we've been getting a lot of rain uh, but it's not been hot and I'm feeling that my hair needs some extra moisture and the glycerin will do that it has uh, coconut oil shea butter vitamin E aloe vera and the fragrance is way at the bottom it has a low to decent lather uh, you don't need a lot of it. I use it primarily to scrub my scalp clean and then I squish it in my hair and rinse. I don't don't usually actually use it to actually wash my hair. Um, it's a nice consistency. You can see in the bottle, it's kind of thick, but uh, it is not really loose. It's not really, it's not, you're gonna have to really work to get it out of there thick. And um, I always find that this leaves my hair with a decent slip, without any dryness, without any tangles, and I do feel like my hair's gotten clean. So I really enjoy that. Um, don't use it very often. That bottle will probably last me a while because I only sh actually shampoo once a week or try to shampoo only once a week. The only time I would shampoo some more is if I've had some issues like I did with that shit. Um, pardon me. But in usual, I use the uh, co-wash, which is a thick, creamy, creamy uh, souffle pudding, whatever you want to call. It doesn't have much movement. You can see it has a little bit. It's starting to come up on the edge here. Uh, it is very, you can feel the moisturizing qualities of it. So what I normally do is uh, I use their papaya castor scalp cleanser. I will use that in my scalp and then I will squish this into the rest of my hair. This one has aloe vera as the second ingredient. It has uh, citerol, um, shea butter as the fourth ingredient, coconut oil as the fifth. It does have vegetable, vegetable oil. It has hydrolyzed keratin. It has some citric acid near the bottom and below the citric acid is the perfume. And anyway, it's really nice. My hair, this leaves my hair feeling very soft and silky and smooth. The slip is great. My hair is not dry. It cannot counteract, um, if my ends are already dry, it can't counteract that, but it does prevent more dryness, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, this is like the one I use almost every day now with the um, papaya castor scalp cleanser. Uh, I, every day, every time I shower, which is usually three to five times a week because of my workout schedule. Uh, I'm one of those people who's a scalp sweater and you, so I have to wash my hair. Uh, so, but I highly, highly recommend the co-wash. If you don't want to use the shampoo, this is great. This is wonderful. And when I want to do a mix, I can, if I need a little extra uh, scrubbing from a little extra cleanliness. I could just throw a little bit of the shampoo in with this and get a little bit more cleansing. Works really well. These do not perform as my clarifiers, however, so just be aware. Uh, next in the list, I'm going to go with the treatment mask. 
I just started doing this. I can't say that it's an absolute favorite mask for me. I have another one that seems to do better when I need it, but I'm cautious about using the same mask over and over um, because one may have more protein than another and that could over protein my hair. Uh, this one has a, a co uh, coconut oil as the second ingredient, acetyl alcohol, uh, aloe vera as the fifth ingredient, soybean oil, shea butter, hydrolyzed silk, that's a protein I'm sure, but it's way down on the bottom near the bottom. Uh, again, it has the citric acid and the par uh, the parfum also on the bottom. Um, I use this as a mask. I don't use this as a deep conditioner. They actually, I actually have a couple of others that I use as a deep conditioner. I haven't tried it as a deep conditioner yet, I'll be honest. But when my hair is having end issues, uh, like when, if I were to continue using that stuff from the Royal Crown, Royal yeah, from them. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the company either. Ah, that's bad. Uh, the company is the Royal Locks. Royal Locks. If I had continued using them and I used their conditioner on my hair, this would go on the very ends of my hair to help protect and get that moisture into my hair if it didn't have dimethicone. Because unfortunately with the dimethicone, I don't think the good stuff would get in. But it is a decent hair mask. So uh not top favorite but it is up there it's one of the ones that i will repurchase uh, i've gotten some others that i've used up that i would not repurchase and i would repurchase this one and it works very well in the line which they're designed to do and it does leave my hair soft and moisturized and feeling really good uh just like i said i like to alternate the masks because they will have different um different ingredients and some will have the protein higher up and some will have them down and I want to make sure I'm keeping that balance. But it's good. I do recommend it if you are looking for a mask. It's not very heavy. It's not, it's thick, but I got a hair in here. Let's get rid of the hair for starters. <laughs> it is kind of on the thick side, but it doesn't feel heavy. It's much like the co-wash. It's You can tell it's very moisturizing just from touching it. It's like a, think like a, a, a thicker, stiffer lotion. Uh, that's what it feels like to me. It's, it's really nice in that sense. So it's a really good hair mask. I just have one that seems to do a little bit more when my hair is more needy. And when my hair is more needy, I make sure to use that one. But this is one that I've just started using and I'm enjoying as well. Alrighty, so next, you get done with all your conditioning and your washing and your in reverse order, but whatever. You go to your leave-in. I really like the leave-in. This is, it seems like it's really thick. It's not. It's interesting in that I have to shake it to get it down there but it's it's more of a another very thick this is almost like some of the face moisturizers i've tried in terms of its thickness and it another one that's very creamy i don't need to use a lot of it in my hair and it does what it needs to do it gives me more moisture it gives me more slip um i rake it in and then i scrunch it in and it just it's it's another one that just the whole line is very moisturizing i'm not sure i can keep I'm going to keep talking about the line and the whole line pretty much is a moisturizing line and it does what I need for my hair, particularly right now. This one has aloe vera as the second ingredient, coconut oil as the third, cocoba as the fourth, safflower oil as the fifth, avocado oil as the sixth. It includes vitamin E, uh, Peg 50 Shea Butter. It has glycerin, but the glycerin's way down on the list. It has hydrolyzed carotene. Uh, the fragrance way down on the list. Yeah, so a lot of beautiful things in here that when I do that 10 to 20 minute soak after my products are in, this is part of what I'm trying to get it to soak in. Uh, because after the soak, I will take a towel and... Um, scrunch out the extra dampness and I want as much of that in my hair as I can rather than on my towel. 
Uh, next, what go on my hair is this elixir. Like I said, I've been using it for a while. It, it does help with um, my uh, frizz a little bit. And this one has coconut oil, uh, aloe vera, shea butter, uh, coconut milk, and then uh, fragrances at the bottom. There's no glycerin. Um, this you only need about a dime size. I use a little bit more than that in my hair. Got more hair. Uh, and um, it does help prevent, doesn't get rid of the frizz. It does help reduce the frizz. And it just, this is the last thing that gets raked in. I rake it in and then I use uh, my easy detangler brush and I brush it through and then I scrunch it. And this does a good job of starting to prime my hair for actual uh, curling products. So I've been using this curling, natural curl defining cream on and off for over a year now. I actually like it, but of course I've been trying a whole bunch of products, so that's why I still have it. Uh, I have used it for preconditioning. I started to use it for um, curl refreshing. I'm not sure how that's going to work in the future because I'm one of those people. I have found that I cannot find a refreshing thing that really works to bring out my curl without it getting really messy and frizzy. So, um, but I was using this because one of the things that I thought was that I could not use heavier products. And this is a lighter uh, consistency cream. There's so little left. <laughs> there is so little of this left. But it's a bit of a lighter consistency cream. It's heavier than the leave-in but it's lighter than the pudding I'm about to show you. And um, again, creamy, moisturizes. It did. It helps bump up my curl. Uh, if I do need like an extra, if I get to the end of my diffusing and I just feel like I need a little extra bump, this actually seems to help with that, which is why I started using it a little bit in my uh, refreshing routine that I was attempting to set up. Um, but it is really good because it's a really lightweight uh, curling cream. Doesn't have that much hold, however. So if you want something with a lot of hold, this is not gonna be it. It just helps give you, get that curl started, so to speak. So really enjoy it for that. Enjoy it for, again, all the moisturizing stuff. Again, we have coconut oil, aloe vera, shea butter, all that stuff is in here. It's a really nice, lightweight cream. Not sure I'm going to repurchase this at this point because I'm liking the pudding better right now. We'll have to see. It is also a very good, um, honestly, it's going to sound weird, but it's also very good uh, pre-shampoo moisturizing addition. You put it in your, get your hair wet, put it in your hair, let it sit, and then you can go wash your hair and you don't have to worry about your hair getting stripped when it's washed. It really helps with that as well. So I know it's a curling cream. I understand it's a curling cream, but it's very moisturizing. Uh, the natural pudding souffle really surprised me. First of all, this stuff is thick and heavy. It's like a butter and it is very, yeah, it's, it's very heavy. So I, when I opened it and I saw that how thick it was, I thought, oh God, that's not going to work for my hair. It works for my hair. This is a good product for me to use when like recently my hair has been having issues with the curl. I'm sorry if you're getting a lot of background noise. My husband's talking to his dad and he's loud. They're both loud. But anyway, I love them, but they're loud. Anyway, uh, this has more hold than the curling cream. And it, um, at the, it moisturizes, it has the same stuff. This one has cetyl alcohol, sterile alcohol, shea butter, uh, coconut oil, jojoba oil, avocado oil, metafoam seed oil, vitamin E, glycerin way down at the bottom, aloe vera, Perfume is also way at the bottom. So it has all of those oils and, and um, things that you need to moisturize your hair. It's really good. It has great hold. And despite the fact that the product itself looks like it would be really heavy, it's not. It doesn't feel heavy on my hair at all. And it helps boost up my curl. I used it today. 
I said, my hair's been having problems. So if it's not looking as curly as it's been in the past, I don't know if it's the weather change. I do know that the dimethicone thing has been an issue um, since I did it. I, one day without some moisture, with the moisture locked in or locked out, whichever way you want to look at it, it just really messed with my hair. <laughs> but I ha was having a little problem before that. So um, anyway, another one that I highly recommend, I actually like this more than the uh, the pudding because it gives you more hold in terms of the cream. It does help bump up the curls and bring them out for you. And uh, yeah, so another one I just, all this stuff is so moisturizing, it's so good. My hair always feels so nice. It feels so soft right now and I don't have any uh, residue or anything. I used a little extra of the All About Curls gel, which I used just before I diffuse, after I scrunch everything in and before I diffuse. And I don't have any residue. I don't scrunch that out. I don't have any residue. My hair feels soft and my curls are doing fairly well today. I mean, it's it's overcast and all that stuff. So um, yeah, even though there's a lot of moisture in these, there's also some protein. And I think that that's just, it's been doing great things with my hair. All right, so the last thing is the natural curling jelly. This one also surprised me because this is really, really, really loose. Uh, it's, it is a gel. It is like a jelly, but it is, it's not watery, but you can see it starting to slide down my hand there. Um, and when you, when you rub it out, it's almost like, almost like a water on my hands when I'm putting it in my wet hair. Um, and it feels also like it might have just a little bit of oil or something in it to give you that extra boost of shine and all that stuff. So this will be the last thing I put in my hair before I sit for about 20 minutes to help because it's a gel, it does help set some of that curl in place. Like I said, I'll let my hair sit for that long. It would take hours for me to get a cast, literally hours. And this one has does have cornstarch, which gives it some thickness. The glycerin is the third ingredient. It's been working, but though it has coconut oil, uh, mango fruit extract, uh, aloe, aloe juice, Shea butter, it has hydrolyzed soy protein, and parfum is very much on the bottom. Again, um, this adds, this is sound strange. It's a gel, so it does have that gel effect, but it also seems to add some juiciness to my curls. And I put this in, and then I just let my hair sit for about, like I said, 10 to 20 minutes. And then I scrunch everything out mostly trying to get rid of the extra liquid in my hair but by the time by the end of that 10 usually around the 15 minute mark i can really tell because my hair will have absorbed everything um and or dried a bit as well and it will just have taken that all in including this stuff so after i scrunch it i add some of the other gel which is a thicker stiffer gel throw that in and then i start to diffuse Anyway, so this is a successful line for me. In fact, I started using this more probably last month. I started having some issues. My hair was just, my hair's just been being weird. I'm going to just say that. The curl has gotten messier. The frizz has gotten worse. But it's been humid, so I was trying to keep the glycerin down. Most of these have glycerin down further down on the, on the ingredient list. Um, I assumed it needed moisture. I just, I needed something new. My current, my products at the time weren't working. Um, my curl didn't flatten out the way it is right now. This was something that happened later, mostly with that other stuff. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't being the beautiful coils and curls that I was seeing earlier. So I feel like I had kind of a, step back a little bit and I think these have helped um, put me back on track they have less glycerin than the Shea Moisture um, Manuka Honey and Mafura Oil line that I really like that I started off with uh, but at the same time they have um, 
they have all the moisturizing things that my hair apparently really needs right now and hopefully we will get my big beautiful bouncy um coils and curls back very very soon anyway so that is a successful line i i always tell people that i recommend things from eden body works all the time i love eden body works it has become my favorite brand for hair care so honestly it's no surprise that this line is something that i really really enjoy i am disappointed about the royal lock stuff but you know not everything really sora she's sharpening her claws at any rate so i've i've meandered a lot again i do this all the time i hope you guys don't mind but I really do, if you have curly hair, look at the Eden Body Works. Uh, the Coconut Shea is great. The uh, My second love is the Papaya Castor. And then they have the Hibiscus Honey line is really beautiful too. The only line that I have a problem with right now that I've tried is the uh, Jojoba Manoy. And that's because most of the products I've gotten from that line are very, very stiff. And I feel like they're tugging at my hair. So that would be the only line that I would be um i would have cautions about especially if you have thin hair hair that's easily uh easy to break anything like that but the other lines honestly give them a try it's it's a beautiful line beautiful brand and i this line i think is really helping my hair out right now when i'm having just some issues with it but i mean i got curl in there today i actually got it's flattening out just a little bit we're hitting the end of the day it's flattening out a little bit, but it's nothing like that picture we saw before, so I'm happy. Anyway, that's it for today, and I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do like what you've seen and you've not subscribed, I hope you will subscribe. If you subscribe, please hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Currently upload three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But we do have bonus videos. We have are going to start having, starting this month, monthly unboxings by my son for his geek stuff. If you're interested in stuff like that, you may want to check that out. And usually I also have, at least once a month, I also have an indie brand opening. That won't be happening until sometime in January, however, because we are getting ready for Christmas. Can't afford any more uh, indie brand stuff. If I buy anything over the next few weeks, it's going to be stuff that I need to replenish because no, I <laughs> can't afford it right now. Christmas is expensive, really expensive in this house. But if you want to see any of that, you're going to have to ring that bell so that you know when they're uploaded because they are not part of my regular uh, uploading days. They usually go up on other days. Uh, I also sometimes do uh, subscriber mail openings on those little bonus videos. So for all those bonus videos, yeah, you need to ring that bell. You need to. If you're part of my notification squad, you'll want to make sure your bell and your subscription are both still active. And if you choose not to subscribe, well, seriously, I'd understand. Your girl just sits here and rambles, and sometimes it sounds like I cannot talk because I stumble and whatever. Not always that bad, but it happens quite a bit, so to be aware and I would understand if it's just too much for you however you are always welcome back here because we love having the company and if you do come back again don't forget to bring your cup of tea this has cooled off considerably not surprised we've been here for a little while I'm really hoping the flavor is just bumped up it's been sitting two bags you better all be in there and melded and yes let's give her a taste so we can get moving I'm still getting that spearmint. It's not nearly as bad. But the chocolate and the actual mint are really good together. I may have missed in terms of the uh, heat level because this has actually cooled off a great deal more than I thought it did. So I may have actually missed that, that sweet spot where everything is nice and mixed. So I will have to try this again one day. It's not a bad tea. It won't be a favorite. It's not as good as Stash, unfortunately. But I think some of that has to do with the spearmint. Anyway, that's it. Hope you all have a great day.